Hey there beer hunters, welcome to another episode of The Beer Huntress. I hope you're all exceptionally well. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jo and I'm the manageress of a real ale and craft beer bar in Wigan in Grace Manchester called Wigan Central and we are all about the beer. That's exactly why I'm here for you today. I'm here to review a beer for you. But I don't know what it's going to be yet, so we're going to turn to the Wheel of Styles, which is hashtag made by John. This is going to pick what style we're going to have. I'm going to pick a beer from there, I'm going to talk a bit about the style history, a bit about the brewery history, and then review the tasting notes. So, shall we crack on and pick the beer? Here we go. I've been looking forward to reviewing one of these for you. So we finally hit upon my favourite style, Imperial. And so I'm super excited to be able to review something for you. So I thought I'd go as old school as I possibly could, even though I've gone for a very new brewery. This is Pressure Drop and this is their Cast Iron Billy. But this is based upon the original Barclay Perkins Imperial Brown Stout recipe, where the Imperial Stout came from. From the 1700s, English porters and other styles were making their way over to Russia, the Baltics and to the colonies as well. Russia initially introduced high tariffs on any of the English imports, but when they realised that they couldn't brew porters like we could, they quickly removed those tariffs and the export from London continued from them. An imperial stout is a strong dark beer in the style that was brewed in the 18th century by Thrales Anchor Brewery. Thrales Anchor Brewery was producing these beers specifically for export and they became a firm favourite of Catherine II, also known as Catherine the Great, who was the Empress of all Russia from 1762 until 1796. She was the country's longest ruling female leader. In 1781, Thrales Brewery changed hands and the beer that they were producing became known as Barclay Perkins Imperial Brown Stout. It was shipped to Russia by a guy called Albert von Lecoq and he was awarded a Russian royal warrant and was entitled to use the term imperial on his beer name. That's a bit like getting the royal seal from our queen these days. A recipe from 1856 shows that that beer had an original gravity of 1.107 and made it almost certainly over 10% ABV. It had over 10 pounds of hops to the barrel and it obviously demonstrated Catherine the Great's absolute love for something a bit boozy. Barclays Brewery was eventually taken over by Courage in 1955 and the beer got renamed to Courage Imperial Russian Stout. It's been brewed then quite sporadically. Um, they do have a date of 1994 since the last time it was brewed. However, I recall having seen this beer at uh, GBBF a couple of times since the 2010s, so I think that information might be slightly out of date. Pressure Drop, although founded during the early days of London's craft beer renaissance. Its trajectory was completely different from those other breweries that were a bit more mainstream and trying to get beers out to the masses. These guys wanted to produce something a little bit more specific, a little bit more personal, and they have slowly grown their reputation due to this fact. Founded by Ben Freeman and Graham O'Brien back in 2013, their flagship at the time was called Pale Fire. It was a highly sought after pale ale in London and was way ahead of its time. It's considered to be a bit of a precursor to the New England craze that everybody's raving about at the moment. And it was so talked about that some people thought that Pale Fire was actually the name of the brewery rather than the name of the beer. Starting out on a 50 litre home brew kit in the Hackney Shed, by 2016 they were brewing on a five barrel brew house in London. A much bigger expansion in 2016 gave them more tank space and actually put them next door to Beaver Town and they have opened their tap room there as well which is called Experiment. Since then they've increased to a very small but mighty 20 barrel plant in Tottenham. Cast Iron Billy is described as being a luxurious imperial brown stout that harkens back to the Victorian London days. It is based on the original Barclay Perkins recipe from 1832, so we can't get any closer to an imperial Russian stout than trying something from the original recipe. 
So, shall we check out the can and then get this thing open? Taking a look at the artwork on this, it actually depicts a brewery which has been um, kind of overtaken, I'm assuming, by kind of Victorian ghosts. That seems to be the suggestion anyway. You've got the uh, mash tun in there and the kiln and the copper and it's really cool. It's very nicely put together. A little bit of detail about the history of the beer. Just a, an attractive, a lot of imperial stouts I'm finding that go down this kind of brownish, um, you know, sepia look or greys or blacks and things. So not very bright, but still very pretty. Oh, look at the colour on that. Look at the head on that. Super looking forward to being able to review something like this with you. It's stunning, thick, full, nice dark brown head there, and just disappearing the minute that I pour it because it's so thick and so full. Hardly see anything through the actual beer itself. Very dark, very opaque. There's not even a tinge of colour on the face no lights coming through there whatsoever oh yes this is gonna be good let's have a smell shall we mm. i can smell treacle molasses oh, so much caramel toffee cinder toffee i think it is I've got some on my lip. It's like pre-tasting. <laughs> mm. It smells really, really earthy. Surprisingly earthy, actually. Very, very good. Okay. <laughs> it's made with six different malts in it. And you can tell why. It's so malty. And I'm just trying to decipher them all and spliss them all up for you. This gorgeous, treacly, caramelised sugar flavour has just flooded the palate when I took that first sip. Surprisingly velvety. And smooth. I'm not picking up as much booze as I expected. An impy stout for me, especially an original one, would have expected a lot more booziness to it. It's certainly sugary, it's certainly sweetened. That kind of uh, cinder toffee and that caramel that I could smell on the nose has come through onto the palate as well. That molasses and treacle, thick, really full, very velvety. But it's not as boozy as I thought it would be. That's probably going to be a bit dangerous to be honest with you for a 10.5 percent you would expect it to taste a little bit more like booze but it's actually really really easy drinking there's very thick coca and i'm getting that dark fruit element that you should get for an impe you know that really kind of raisins and dates and prunes and that kind of thing coming across. There's that hint of vanilla that's just giving it a really really nice creaminess. Very pleasant. It's got a very rich complex and very intense on the flavour. It just doesn't have that ABV profile I was expecting. Which I can't decide whether or not I want or I don't want for this beer. I'm loving the complexity, I'm loving the velvety texture and I'm loving the rich flavour from it. Do I want that booziness? Do I want that warm? The whole roof of my mouth is coated with that treacle, licorice -y, stunning uh, caramelised sugar kind of flavour all across the top. My tongue is tarred over with it. 
the bottom of my palette's getting all that fruit and that dark fruit thing. It's just at the back. All at the back is just that kind of treacle and sweetness. There's, there's just lacking that booze. That could be very dangerous. She says as she takes another swig. I'm actually quite impressed with how smooth that is. I expect um, that booze kick, which can sometimes be slightly off-putting for an Imperial. That doesn't have it. It's just thoroughly smooth and enjoyable and velvety, pillowy experience. Very rich, very complex, but the intensity is coming from the flavour, not from the alcohol. Get used to that. If this is how they made them, back then, it's no wonder Catherine the Great absolutely loved them. What an easy thing to drink with such a full, viscous flavour. It's almost an oxymoron, but you'll know exactly what I mean if you ever try it. Yeah. I could definitely be Catherine the Great with this in my hand. Absolutely. Mmm. So Moorish. If you've had this guys, then please let me know what you thought of it. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed drinking this beer. Keep watch banking and I'll see you next time for another episode of the Beer Hunters. Cheers! If you enjoyed this video guys, then please like, subscribe and share it with your friends. Hit that notifications button to get alerts when our new video is out. We're also on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram, so check out the links in the description and follow us on there as well. If there's anything you'd like to see us review, please pop it in the comments and we'll pop it in the pump for later. Keep watch banking and I shall see you all next time for another episode of The Beer Huntress.